Hello, and welcome to this video for Physics 132 lab, which will explore a different way of propagating errors known as the crank three times method. The material in this video is based upon this content from Jay Denker and used with permission. So let's sort of review where we are up to this point. You know from previous courses how to propagate uncertainties through most calculations using significant figures. And from a prior section, you should be familiar with the concept of standard deviation. This video will show you one method of using standard deviation to propagate uncertainties through a calculation. This method is called the crank three times method. It's a relatively easy method of propagating uncertainties, particularly through complex calculations, and is actually used in research. For example, I know I used it in my PhD dissertation. So let's explore how to implement the crank three times method for the simplest case where there is only one variable in our calculation with any uncertainty. So step one is you do the calculation in the usual way, using your nominal best estimate values, usually the mean for each input variable. Then you redo the calculation with the uncertain variable at the upper end of its error bar. For example, if you have a standard deviation, you could use the mean plus the standard deviation for this round of calculation. Finally, you redo the calculation a third time using not the mean, but the mean at the lower end of its error bar. So again, if you had a standard deviation, you could use the mean minus the standard deviation. Use the differences between steps two and one and steps three and one to get your uncertainties. As usual, you only keep one digit of uncertainty and round your central value to that same number of digits. And furthermore, as we'll see in our example, asymmetric uncertainties are perfectly okay. You see these all the time in research. And this method will actually give you asymmetric uncertainties. So let's do an example. In this class, you will learn that if you happen to be far, far sighted, the power of your glass is P in diopters, which is a unit labeled D, is related to the distance F at which your glasses will bring parallel light to a point. This is called the focal length. We'll discuss this in the second unit of the course. And this distance that it takes to bring light to a point is called the focal length, and it's in meters. That's not really important for this example. The key point for this example is that the power in diopters is related to one over the focal length. So now let's say we take a person who's farsighted and we take their glasses and we measure this focal length and we do five different measurements. And here are our results in meters. We can go and calculate the mean using the usual method and the standard deviation. So now let's turn the crank and calculate the power of this person's glasses. For the best estimate, we'll use the mean, 0 0.516 meters. So the power is 1 over 5.516 meters, giving us 1.93816 dot, 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 diopters. As always, you want to keep all your digits in the middle of the calculation. The second crank, we use the upper error bar. So in this case, we'll use the mean plus the standard deviation. So we'll add 0.516 and 0.118, put that underneath the one to calculate the power. And I'm going to indicate that with this P plus symbol. And the result will be 1.57 blah, 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 diopters. The third crank, we do the mean minus the standard deviation. And that gives us 2.514 blah, 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 diopters. Now we've done our three cranks and we can use the differences to get the uncertainties. Upper uncertainty on power actually comes from the lower uncertainty on focal length, which may seem counterintuitive until you think about the mathematical relationship. It's a reciprocal. So a big number in the denominator makes a smaller number. So our upper uncertainty, we take P minus, which is where we use the mean minus the standard deviation, and subtract that from our central value to get this plus 0.57597 dot dot dot. We then use P plus to get what in this case is actually our lower uncertainty. And we get a negative 0.3126 dot dot dot. And then you'll notice here that the results are asymmetric. This is actually a positive attribute of this particular calculation technique. So our final number is 1.9 plus 0.6 minus 0.4 diopters. 
So a couple things to point out. One, we're only keeping one digit of uncertainty and rounding our value at that number of digits. And we have asymmetric uncertainties. And this is how we write asymmetric uncertainties. You know, we do the plus and the minus. If you look in research papers, you'll see numbers like this all the time. So let's compare this crank three times result to what we might get from significant figures. For significant, so our crank three times result gives us, as we just saw, 1.9 plus 0.6 minus 0.4 diopters. Significant figures, all of our numbers had three significant figures. So the sig fig rules would tell us to keep three sig figs, 1.94 diopters, where this last digit is assumed to be uncertain. And if we wanted to write it in our normal way, we would say 1.94 plus or minus 0.01 diopters. A couple of things to note, the crank three times method gives us asymmetric uncertainties like we already saw. And in this particular case, that is, we think, a benefit. Whereas the sig fig rules will always give you symmetric uncertainties. The sig fig rules assume the last digit is uncertain. And so by construction, the uncertainties are always symmetric. The crank three times uncertainties in this case are much larger. The plus uncertainty has a percent uncertainty of 0.06 over 1.9 of 31.6%. And the lower uncertainty is below the mean value of by 21.1%. In comparison, the significant figure percent uncertainty is much smaller, 0.01 over 1.9 or only 5.3%. Because of these two differences, we argue that the crank three times method is therefore a much more accurate representation of the uncertainty in our value. So in summary, the crank three times easy method is easy to implement when you only have one variable with uncertainty. You do the calculation with the best value, then you do the calculation with the value at its upper error bar, and note this may come out lower than the result of, with your best value, depending upon the formula you're using. Then for the third time, you do the value minus the error bar. And then you subtract three from one and two from one to get your uncertainties. Some benefits of this method are beyond that it's easy, is that you can get asymmetric results. And that's okay, that, that's normal, that's fine. And one thing I'll caution you though, is that if you have multiple variables with uncertainty, you need to be a little bit more careful with how you implement this method. You'll explore the consequences of this result in your lab. This concludes this video.